Coming up on Valley View News, Californians are split on the gas-driven car ban. Electric cars are much cheaper to run. They use a lot less energy to run. Plus, the People's Project throws an art expedition. It has been a hard-fought battle, and the struggle truly is real, as you'll see in the gallery. And an ACC football referee swings between the field and her child's playtimes. Really, really put the effort in to just pick them up, be with them, spend as much time as possible, come out to practices. Hello and welcome to Valley View News. I'm Savannah Taylor. And I'm Lockie Walker. A new Omicron subvariant has been detected in LA County. Scientists think it could be problematic. So far, specimens of the new Omicron variant have been detected in LA County. It's been spreading in parts of Asia and Europe. Some public health officials say the COVID-19 shot may not protect against this new variant. In higher risk people, it could lead to severe illness or death. Nuri Martinez resigned as president of the city council after she and two council members were heard making disparaging racist remarks on a leaked audio. The LA Times published leaked audio of Martinez calling the child of fellow council member Mike Bonin a changuito, or little monkey. Bonin represents the 11th district and has adopted a dark-skinned son. Martinez also called Bonin little bitch. Council members Gil Cedillo and Kevin De Leon were part of the recorded discussion. The audio has De Leon accusing Bonin of treating his son as an accessory. Martinez released an apology Sunday. The statement says she'll hold herself accountable. The middle class tax refund program can offer up to $1,050 to qualifying Californians. Governor Gavin Newsom says the payments are meant to help with rising food and gas prices. 23 million taxpayers are eligible for the payments. Smaller payments will be given to higher earners. In order to get the refund, a person must have filed a 2020 tax return. Those eligible will get their payments electronically. In 2035, the sale of new gas cars will be banned in California. Our reporter David Reyes talked to some people to get their thoughts on this new policy. In 2020, Governor Gavin Newsom signed an executive order banning the sales of new gas power vehicles after 2035. In August of this year, the California Air Resources Board voted in favor of the order and is now taking aggressive steps towards increasing electric vehicle sales. Carlos Alves says it's essential that people diminish their carbon footprints. Electric cars are much cheaper to run. They use a lot less energy to run, um, and they're much less dependent on fossil fuels, obviously. Uh, the way the grid is right now, it's somewhat dirty, but we can clean up the grid over the course of the next few years. Auto mechanics teacher Russell Martin has been in the automotive industry for more than 40 years. He says the battery in the Tesla can cost up to $20,000 to replace while replacing a car engine is much cheaper. When it comes to the customer buying a new battery, that's a lot of money. That's a thousand pounds of batteries. Martin is also concerned about how electric car batteries will be recycled. As a community, we have cars that now their battery has to be recycled. What do we do with that? Also announced earlier this year, the state will ban the sales of gas powered lawn equipment such as lawnmowers and leaf blowers, but that will be starting in 2024. For Bellevue News, I'm David Reyes. The National Labor Relations Board approved a union vote for dancers at a topless bar in North Hollywood. The dancers fought for months to get the approval to vote for a union. If they're successful, they'll be the only dancers in the U.S. represented by a union. The Actors' Equity Association, which represents over 51,000 theater actors and stage managers, is a possible union to represent the dancers. The National Labor Relations Board will mail ballots to the dancers this month. Vote counting starts November 7th. State child care waivers are set to expire next year. The waivers subsidize child care payments for low-income families. The governor vetoed a bill last month that would have made the waivers permanent. Some parents say the waiver gave them a chance to catch up on other bills. The Department of Social Services says many have already benefited from the waivers. 
The time to claim child tax credit is running out. Families with children under six can get a credit for up to $3,600 per child. For children ages six to 17, the credit can be up to $3,000. The credit was expanded in 2021 by the Biden administration's American Rescue Plan. The change is only for one year though. It'll be reduced to $2,000 next year. The United Teachers of LA filed unfair labor practice charges against LA Unified School District. The union says the district obscured the number of job vacancies in the district. UTLA members cover classes during plant periods and lunch. Some even teach grade levels outside of their expertise. LAUSD says it's working to fill vacancies. Schools in low income neighborhoods were most affected by the vacancies. The governor said Friday that he's calling a special session of the legislature in December. He wants to pass a new tax law governing oil company profits. Newsom says he wants to punish oil companies for price gouging. California price average is $2.58 more than the national average, according to AAA. The oil industry's leaders say California's gas prices are higher because of tougher environmental laws and regulations. Officials say dozens were arrested for mail theft and postal fraud schemes. California Attorney General Rob Bonta says almost $5 million was stolen from 750 people in the past four years. There were 56 suspects. Bonta says the suspects operated in multiple counties using different bank accounts. They're accused of altering stolen checks and depositing them. Investigators believe the money funded other criminal operations. A federal judge found that changes made to the U.S. Postal Service before the 2020 election harmed mail delivery. U.S. District Judge Emmett G. Sullivan ruled that the Postal Service failed to seek the required advice from the Postal Regulatory Commission, resulting in slowed delivery. Several states, counties, and cities that filed suit against the USPS and the Postmaster General proved that the delays affected their ability to respond to the pandemic and provide safe alternatives to in-person voting. Their post office changes in June and July led to a record decline in service scores. Improvements didn't rebound in time for the 2020 elections. The USPS General Counsel told states that if they didn't pay first-class postage on ballots, that many voters wouldn't get them in time to return them by mail. Most of the changes were eventually reversed. 24-Hour Fitness said it partnered with digital health platform Headspace Health. They'll offer three months of free Headspace subscriptions to new or existing members at the at 300 clubs. The subscription provides access to more than 1,000 hours of mindful content that includes meditation, breathing exercises, and mindful walks and runs. The company says its goal is to create a healthier and happier world. A youth league in Santa Clarita is teaching kids how to expand their skills in the game of basketball. Our reporter Jesse Barrientos was in attendance. The state owned Basketball Academy tries to maximize the potential of the teens it enrolls. Taylor Stadium says he started so kids could improve their basketball skills. Starting this youth league um, was very important. Uh, you know, just putting them in a competitive atmosphere at a young age and, and really showing them how to maximize their talents and what they're good at. Many kids have joined the youth league this season. Chris Drew is one of the coaches. It has been a blessing for sure. Uh, I love working with kids. Helping the kids get to the next level is definitely a big part of this journey. Um, seeing the kids grow as players. Another coach, Anthony Morrow, has a child in the academy. He says this league is much different than other leagues. It gives kids a chance to showcase their skills um, at another step up from maybe City League, and it gives them a chance to express themselves and their game. As Statham teaches kids how to build their basketball skills, he also plans for the league to grow in Santa Clarita. You know, my goal has always been to you know, just captivate and uh, really expand the culture of basketball in SCV. Taylor Stadium's goal for next spring is have another youth league. Reporting from Golden Valley in Santa Clarita, I'm Jesse Barrientos, Valley View News. Pork producers are challenging a California law before the U.S. Supreme Court. The law creates new regulations for raising hogs and veal calves and chickens. California represents 15% of the U.S. pork market. 
most commercial hog farms claim they're only able to provide room for animals to sit or lie down in their bins. There's not enough room for them to turn around. The new state law requires at least 24 square feet of space. The National Pork Producer Council says the requirements impose a heavy compliance cost for farmers. The council makes the oral argument before the Supreme Court next week. The California Geological Survey released updated tsunami hazard maps for seven counties. It'll help determine whether they're in areas at risk for a tsunami. One update shows that Santa Cruz County would be affected by an earthquake off the Aleutian Islands. The quake could create tsunami waves 18 to 25 feet above the Santa Cruz boardwalk. The geological survey says California's shores have been struck by more than 150 tsunamis since the 1800. Most were minor, only a few were destructive and deadly, like the tsunami triggered by the 1964 Alaska earthquake. Fifteen people died in that quake near Crescent City. About 42,000 utility workers have restored electricity to more than 2.5 million businesses and homes in Florida. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis praised workers for the work they did in the early phases of the recovery from Hurricane Ian. They got water services going and built temporary bridges to Pine Island. There's still a lot of debris to clean up. Furniture, trash, and pieces of homes may take months, if not years, to clean up. Hurricane Ian killed 119 people. A Coachella man was arrested on suspicion of DUI after crashing his car into a light post and fence. 22-year-old Alexander Felix also had his 2-year-old son in the back of the car. The crash happened at early Sunday morning. The child has been hospitalized with minor injuries. Felix was arrested on DUI and child endangerment charges. San Diego State University is getting criticized for its handling of a case involving gang rape allegations. The university defend, defended its decision to wait seven months before alerting students about rape allegation. SDSU says San Diego police couldn't confirm the victim's identity because she didn't come forward to the university. Some on campus say the public has no confidence in the university to protect students and staff. Last Thursday in Las Vegas, a man stabbed multiple people on the Las Vegas Strip. He attacked a group of showgirls outside a casino. Two people were killed and six were injured. Police arrested 32-year-old Yanni Barrios just a few blocks away from the attack. An arrest report said Barrios told police some of the victims laughed at him and he let out his anger. Prosecutors say he'll be charged with two counts of murder and six counts of attempted murder. More to come on Valley View News. Families mourn the Thailand massacre, and Nicaragua is hit by a hurricane. Queridos papás y mamás, sabemos que no siempre ha sido fácil y que han trabajado muy duro. Lo que ustedes han logrado hoy nos ayudará a nosotros en el futuro. Por eso estamos subiendo al escenario a recibir sus diplomas. Nos amamos mucho. Cuando tú te gradúas, ellos se gradúan. Visita completatudiploma.org para encontrar centros educativos gratuitos y prácticos cerca de ti. For a look into international news, here's Camille Acevedo in our Digital Media Center. A gas station in a small northwest Ireland village exploded. Ten people were killed. Ireland's prime minister spoke to the public. It's very, very difficult to comprehend that as people go about their daily lives, something like this could happen in the middle of the day and it's been extraordinarily difficult and traumatic for many people as they've had long waits. Emergency workers searched for more bodies in the piles of rubble. The explosion happened last Friday in Creeslaw County, Donegal. Four men, three women, two teenagers and a young girl were killed. Eight others are hospitalized. Police are still investigating the cause of the explosion. Nearby cottages and apartments were also damaged. Families gathered at a Buddhist temple last Saturday to mourn the young lives lost in a shooting at a daycare center in northeastern Thailand. Mourning ceremonies take place for three days. The funerals are organized and paid for by the royal family. 
36 people were killed, 24 of them were preschoolers. The bodies were released and sent to three different temples around town. Mourners stayed overnight in the tradition of keeping company those who died young. The shooter was a former police officer. After his killing spree, he went home and killed his wife and child. He then committed suicide. This was Thailand's deadliest mass killing. U.S. officials say the recent launch of multiple missiles from North Korea was a simulation for plans to launch nuclear weapons on its enemies, South Korea and the United States. The test launchings are viewed as an attempt to bolster Kim Jong-un's reputation as a strong leader. North Korea claims the missile tests are a response to recent naval drills conducted by the U.S. and South Korea. Hurricane Julia just hit Nicaragua's central Caribbean coast. It's bringing heavy rain across Central America. It's expected to travel to the coast of Guatemala and then El Salvador. Julia is a Category 1 hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 85 miles per hour. Life-threatening flash floods and landslides could happen all over Central America and Southern Mexico. Heavy rains and flooding caused a landslide that swept through a town in central Venezuela. 22 people were killed. Residents of Las Tejerias had only seconds to reach safety before the landslide swept through the town late Saturday evening. Many homes were swept away. Dozens are still missing. Rescuers have been searching for victims since last Sunday. Within the past week, 11 of Venezuela's 23 states suffered from flooding due to the torrential rains. Back to you guys at the studio. An art exhibit dedicated to boosting community awareness was sponsored by union workers and community activists in Los Angeles. Our Savannah was there and filed this report. That the youth need art in their life. The Creative Resilience Art Expedition is meant to magnify the voices of Black, Indigenous, and people of color who work in Los Angeles. It's coordinated by People's Project and Spitfire. The People's Project is a mutual aid network created by the Los Angeles County Federation of Labor. The People's Project spokesperson Tatiana Ramirez says labor movements are vital to society. Like you and myself, what we know as basic human rights and just basic worker rights, we're not always basic. They're weren't always common. Much of the art reflects personal experiences of underappreciated workers like cultivation farmers. Volunteer Juana Alcala mentions how refreshing it is to see real representation. But this, being in this exhibit has really shown me how great the future could be, especially looking at our, our paintings like this. Um, it, it brings a lot of hope and, and a lot of inspiration to others. There are more than 100 works of art. Organizers want this event to showcase the significance of protests through culture and art. It is also meant to share mutual aid resources through community building. Music, free food, and games were also featured at the art show. Ramirez says this showcase represents the resilience of the community. The labor movement hasn't always been, you know, rainbows and butterflies. It has been a hard fought battle, and the struggle truly is real, as you'll see in the gallery. The Creative Resilience Art Expedition will continue through October 16th. To donate, please visit golively.org. The world's largest cryptocurrency exchange may have lost more than $100 million after hackers hit its blockchain network. Binance was the latest crypto company to be hit by hackers. It reported a breach between two blockchains in their system. As a result, an estimated $100 to $110 million was stolen. Crypto company Nomad was also hacked in August. It lost nearly $200 million. The company Harmony was hacked in June. It lost about $100 million as well. Binance says its hacking is now contained and handled. Customers now have access to their funds. Tesla is starting production of its electric semi-commercial truck. It will be delivering them to PepsiCo on December 1st. Tesla says the vehicle has a range of 500 miles per charge. PepsiCo ordered 100 Tesla semi-electric trucks in 2017 in order to re reduce fuel costs and emissions. The Class 8 truck was set to go into production by 2019, but it had multiple delays and pushed rollout to this fall. The truck is expected to cost $180,000, but it qualifies for a $40,000 tax break under a U.S. subsidy program. Chinese cities are imposing fresh lockdowns and travel restrictions after the number of daily COVID-19 infections tripled during a week-long holiday. The latest lockdown started Monday in northern China's Shanxi province. China is one of the few places in the world still mandating strict measures to keep the disease from spreading. Authorities discourage people from leaving their cities and provinces.
Amazon will stop the live test for their automated delivery robot. The Amazon Scout program did not meet customers' needs. According to the company, they will not abandon the project completely, but will focus on reorienting it. Scout was the size of a small cooler and moved on sidewalks. It was tested in Washington State back in 2019. It made its way to Southern California. When we come back, the Orange County Museum of Art held a 24-hour celebration. Also, the 49ers had a big win. Stay with us. Thanks. Great having you. Incredible women. I wish they had those kind of cool careers for women when we were growing up. Growing up. Thank you. So in this flashback, we're all the same age? Yeah. Oh. So what does everyone want to be when they grow up? Yes. I want to make immersive video games. I oh, love the arcade. If I say two jobs, do I get extra credit? No. I want to revolutionize 3D printing. 3D? Like those classes we were in the movies. I want to analyze data from the cloud. I just want to get my hands unstuck. Oh. Yep. I want to be a meteor. You mean meteorologist. No. That's great, Al. Follow your dreams. For the record, I was a baby in the 70s. It's the Orange County Museum of Arts held its long-awaited grand opening. This $93 million project has been over a decade in the making and is now the grand jewel for Costa Mesa's Sagerstrom Center for Arts. To celebrate the museum, held a 24-hour celebration filled with music, art, and activities. The event was filled with people celebrating art and community. If you couldn't make it to the grand opening, you can still go during normal business hours. For the next 10 years, tickets are free. A cheetah mom has given birth to two cubs in Virginia. The Smithsonian National Zoo released video showing a cheetah with two babies born at the facility's Flint Loyal campus. Keepers say Amani gave birth on October 3rd and say the cubs are good and active. The zoo hasn't determined the sex of the cubs because the keepers say they want Amani to bond with her newborns without interference. The cubs are also seven-year-old Amani's first offspring. The cheetahs made it over the summer. This is the 17th litter of cheetah cubs born at the zoo since 2007. The 45-year-old rapper formerly known as Kanye West, who now goes by Ye, recently caused controversy after his White Lives Matter shirt at Paris Fashion Week. The rapper and designer spent the weekend writing several posts that were anti-Semitic in which he declared his plan to go Death Con 3 on Jewish people. This got his Instagram account restricted and the post delete it. He took to his Twitter account where he posted from the first time within two years calling out Mark Zuckerberg claiming he wasn't anti-Semitic. West account are still active but cannot post for a disclosed amount of time. Prince Harry, Elton John, and Elizabeth Hurley are among the celebrities suing the Daily Mail for what they say is abhorrent criminal activity. The group says Associated Newspapers Limited hired private investigators to bug their cars and homes, recorded private phone calls, and bribed cops for information. The celebs also claim the Daily Mail and other outlets sent impersonators to get medical records and even hacked bank accounts and financial transactions. Associated Newspapers says the allegations are nothing more than an attempt to drag the media company into a phone hacking scandal that goes back to the 90s. ANL says the lawsuit is a fishing expedition. Karina Tovar lives the unique double life of being the first Latina D1 college football referee and being a mom. Our reporter Giovanni Galvez has more on her story. Being a mother is no easy task. Having a job where you must travel across the country every weekend makes being a mother even harder. This is Karina Tovar's life. You miss your family, you miss your kids. I think, you know, my husband and I, we're, you know, we're grown enough to know that I'll see you on Monday, right? Um, I think it's hard for the kids. Being a football mom and a professional referee has its pros and cons. Sometimes that means not being able to see her boys playing football. Really, really put the effort in to just pick them up, be with them, spend as much time as possible, come out to practices. I mean, although I'm with football all day. When Sunday nights roll around, her boys, Isaac and Isaiah Del Cid, know mom will be back home. For Tovar, Sundays means she could spend time with her family. Well, um, when she gives me a hug uh, after school, um, and um, sometimes um, she plays with me. They are going to run next to her. Tovar's husband, Randy Del Cid, says she's an inspiration. What she's doing is uh, 
it's great. It's, it's a good time for her to, to, to come up, and it's, uh, you know, she's really good. Tavar will be leaving her mom duties to Boston College on Thursday night. Her husband and kids will be supporting her from back home. I'm Giovanni Galvez, Valley V News. Lindsay Lohan will be home for the holidays. The actress, who hasn't been on the big screen with a leading role in a major film in a decade, is starring in Falling for Christmas. The Netflix movie has Lohan portraying a recently engaged hotel heiress who suffers from amnesia following a skiing incident. Lohan's character starts to fall for the man who's helping her recover, played by Court Overstreet. Falling for You starts streaming November 10th. The horror flick Smile has topped the box office for a second straight weekend, earning nearly $50 million in its first 10 days. Don't Worry Darling dropped to the fifth place. The Woman King was number four with more than $5 million. Amsterdam opened in third place, grabbing six and a half mil. Lyle Lyle Crocodile, based on a children's book, opened at second place, taking home $11.5 million. The big movie coming out this Friday is Halloween Ends, the latest to the Michael Myers saga. Beyonce denied allegations she misused a sample of Right Said Fred's I'm Too Sexy. The Grammy-winning songwriter's seventh album, Renaissance, was released to critical acclaim in July and samples iconic house and disco artists. One song, Alien Superstar, features a similarity of the 1991 British pop hit I'm Too Sexy, where Fred sang I'm Too Sexy for My Shirt. Beyonce sings, I'm too classy for this world, and I'm too classy to be touched. Wright said Fred claims Queen Bee never asked for permission to use the melody. I'm too sexy was sampled in Drake's Way Too Sexy and Taylor Swift's Look What You Made Me Do. The biggest gourd has the set the record for the heaviest pumpkin in North America. It weighs in at a whopping 2,000 480 pounds. Jamie Graham won the prize at the annual All England Giant Pumpkin Weigh-Off. The pumpkin broke the previous record by more than 200 pounds. Graham posted to social media with the pumpkin he named Bear Swipe. He said it's now the fourth biggest in the world. Not the best day for the Rams at the SoFi Stadium, but one bright spot was Rams star Jalen Ramsey getting his first career sack against the Cowboys. The cornerback coming on a blitz to take out Cooper Rush from the blind side. It's hard to believe Ramsey, who's in his seventh NFL season, had never sacked a QB before yesterday. But the Cowboys' defense had the better day, sacking Matthew Stafford five times and forcing two fumbles. One led to a touchdown. The Cowboys beat the Rams 22 to 10. The San Francisco 49ers had another big win this week, beating Panthers 37 to 15. Their defense led the way with six sacks and a pick six. Their offense was clicking on all cylinders with Jeff Wilson Jr. rushing for 120 yards and one touchdown. Quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo threw for 253 yards and two touchdowns. More than 2 million people watched the Super Mario movie trailer. Chris Pratt and Jack Black led the cast of voices for the animated film that will come out next April. Kunal Nair said he did like the story life of A.J. Fikri because the title role was not written for an Indian actor. The story of A.J. Fikri is now in theaters. It's a first look of Jennifer Lawrence and Brian Tyree Henry's new movie Causeway. The film is about two people helping each other get through trauma. The movie is set to release in select theaters on Apple TV November 4th. That's all for Valley View News. I'm Savannah Taylor. And I'm Rocky Walker. For stories any time of day, go to our website, csunvalleyview.edu. Thanks for watching.